Hello and welcome to Research Methods Part C, the final part. It's quite sad, really, that we're going to have to go. Uh, anyway, on with the show. Welcome, Wulkan and Sarah Coleman. Cue the music. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Research Methods Part C, all about reporting studies. I'm Will Kahn. And I'm Sarah Coleman. And kicking off with writing a report. There are seven sections within a report. You need to know how to write all of them. Lol. There are the abstracts, the aim, the method, the results, the discussion, the references and the appendix. But I'm sure you know all of that already. Kicking off with the abstract, which is a whole report summed up in a paragraph. Include the aims, hypothesis, procedure... Met results, methods and conclusions in a very brief manner so that people who read it can see roughly what you did in your study. The introduction, or aim, is what the research is intended to investigate. This includes a review of any previous research, fully operationalised hypotheses and generally why you are conducting the study. The method is a detailed description of what the researchers did. You should include the design type, details about the participants, the materials used, the procedure and any controls, pretty much part B of the video series that we're doing. The results are what the research has found, including tables, averages and graphs and any significant statistics, pretty much everything in part A of this video series. The discussion is where the researchers offer explanations of behaviours they have observed. Here, they assess the strengths and weaknesses of the study, suggesting any implications and suggestions for further research. The references section includes the full details of any articles or books that are mentioned. And finally, the appendix, which includes details of the materials used, for example, the brief, statistics statistical calculations and generally any of your working on materials. On to peer review, I think, Sarah. Once the study has been completed, your work needs to be peer reviewed. This is where the work is held up for scrutiny so that the work, uh, if it's fraudulent, can be detected and ignored. A peer review is an assessment usually done by other experts in the same field. They, uh, they are there to assure that the public's research is of high quality. And to prevent bias, the scientists who carry out are unpaid. Usually. Peer review serves three purposes, to allocate research funding in the publication of research in scientific journals or on books, and in assessing the research rating of university departments. But it does have criticisms that you need to know. It's expensive, highly subjective, prone to bias and easily abused. But the three major criticisms that you need to know are... Unachievable, ideal. It's always, it isn't always possible to get an expert, so the research may be passed because it wasn't understood. Anonymity. In a competitive field, scientists with grudges against others may let that affect their results. Though it is supposed to be anonymous, sometimes it can be obvious whose work it is. And finally, publication bias, where peer review tends to favour the publication of positive results due to good implications. And finally, ethical issues. Uh, they're basically, well, they are essentially the same as the AS. If you need a reminding of any of that content, then check out our revision videos. You can click the slide now, or if that doesn't work, then the link's in the description. That's it for part C, and that's it for the whole of Research Methods A2. Yay! Listen to the playlist over and over again, and that is everything you need to know to get all the marks in the exam. Yes. You're very welcome. Thank you, Miss Sarah Coleman. Thank you, Mr. William Kahn. Uh, Riva Detchia, goodbye. Thank you to you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.